understand how a document can be this <laughs> critical. Like, unless it has, you want the picture, you're saying if it has a picture of Putin and Trump making out? <laughs> yes. Like, short of the nuclear codes being written on these documents in a locked behind closed doors, I just <laughs> really don't understand how a document could warrant this kind of warrant. Hmm. That was Fox News anchor Dana Perino on August 11th. Little did she know she was predicting the future. Well, kind of. I mean, on the same day she made that comment, the Washington Post broke the story that the FBI was searching Trump's compound to look for nuclear documents and other items. Now, fast forward to this week, and the Washington Post now reporting that the FBI found what they were looking for. People familiar with the matter told the Post that FBI agents found a document, quote, describing a foreign government's military defenses, including its nuclear capabilities, underscoring concerns among U.S. intelligence officials about classified material stashed in the Florida property. As the paper reports, quote, records that deal with such programs are kept under lock and key almost always in a secure compartmented information facility with a designated control officer to keep careful tabs on their location. Now, only nine countries in the world possess nuclear weapons, including the United States, which means eight countries are likely very interested in what exactly was found at Mar-a-Lago. Those countries would be Russia, France, China, the UK, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea. But Florida's Republican Senator Marco Rubio, who notably is the vice chair of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, seems to be more concerned with how the leak actually happened. That doesn't seem like the kind of thing you should have uh, in your post-presidential desk drawer. Well, let's break this down. First of all, uh, again, we, we really don't know. Because uh, let's go back and understand that all of this information is coming from one side and one place. And that is sources with knowledge of the investigation. Well, who are the sources with knowledge of the investigation? The FBI and the Justice Department. And they are leaking to the media. Maybe Marco Rubio should figure it out. I mean, I'm no intel expert, but if I had to bet, I'd assume others are actually more concerned that documents detailing a foreign country's nuclear capabilities were just sitting and hanging out at a country club. Joining me to talk more about this is an actual intel expert, Frank Figluzzi. He's an NBC News national security analyst, a former FBI assistant director, and is the author of The FBI Way inside the Bureau's Code of Excellence. Frank Figluzzi, thank you so much for being here, as always, on the show. Let's begin with your big takeaways from all of this new reporting from The Washington Post. As someone with a counterintelligence background, exactly how concerned are you? Yeah, Katie, it's, it's bad. Um, it doesn't get much more grave in terms of classified documents than those related to foreign nations' capabilities. And here, here's why. When, when you get compromised in terms of this area, you're essentially telling a foreign nation what is working and what is not working. Here's what I mean by that. When, you, when, when someone gets their hands on this document, they can see what we know about them, and then necessarily they can figure out what we don't know about them, which is almost more valuable than knowing what we know about them, because they can continue on keeping on with what's working and we haven't figured out yet, and they can change and or hide or alter that which we've already compromised. So there's tremendous value, not only for a nation to know that, but for their adversaries to know that about them. So in terms of monetizing something like this, it's through the roof, literally could be in the billions of dollars that a nation would want to pay to learn something about an adversary's nuclear program or know what we know about theirs. Frank, there aren't a whole lot of other countries with nuclear capabilities. We mentioned it at the beginning of your segment. I mean, we're showing you the map. I mean, what do you think these other countries are doing right now to figure out? I'm assuming there's some scramble going on. I mean, don't they need to figure out whether or not it's their nuclear information that was hanging out in Mar-a-Lago? So there's a lot of scrambling going on, not only amongst the, these nuclear nations, but uh, also within the U.S. intelligence community, because, Katie, it's, it, let's think about this. Keep, our adversaries try to keep their nuclear programs and capabilities secret, particularly those nations that are under development. So you've listed a number of countries that have nukes now, but 
You also know there are countries that are developing nuclear capabilities, and it's quite likely that that's what this document is about, a, a nation who is continuing to build a program or a capability, maybe putting nukes on submarines, as, as has been publicly reported about North Korea. Certainly, we know Iran is continuing to develop a nuclear capability. What if we have a human source coupled with satellite imagery, very sensitive stuff, that's telling us about the development of those programs? And what if those nations were to see what we found out about them. Tremendous value. And then the human sources. Imagine the CIA or DIA or NSA going, that's our document. Those are our sources and methods in there. That's part of the damage and risk assessment that the DNI is currently conducting. You know, Frank, another part of this Washington Post bombshell that just came out that really stuck with me was the following language, quote, some of the seized documents detail top secret U.S. operations so closely guarded that many senior national security officials are kept in the dark about them. I mean, Frank, I, I think that there is a lot of bluster that's going on with the GOP from people like Marco Rubio, from Trump's legal team. But I think it's always important to underscore the importance of exactly the kind of information that was located. We've talked about this before, Frank. There's three different sets of documents. You have the ones that were, quote, voluntarily turned over in the 15 boxes to NARA by Trump, the ones that were handed over in a red well um, in around June, right, Vo again, voluntarily by Trump in compliance with a subpoena. But in this stealth, I mean, it really was unannounced search warrant that was executed. That's when you find these kinds of documents, the ones that are so closely guarded that senior national security off officials are kept in the dark about them. Frank, what exactly is going on here? I mean, does the fact that Judge Cannon is allowing ODNI to continue its threat assessment or its damage assessment kind of a very, very large red flag that we should be paying attention to as well? Well, there's a couple of red flags. One is, yes, thank goodness that Judge Cannon has said you can continue your damage assessment. I think she, she knows more than we know, and she knows it's bad, and, and they need to continue to do this. But the other red flag, of course, Katie, is that she said to stop using any of the seized documents from the warrant in the criminal investigation, and that's bad. That's bad because the FBI should be jumping all over this, and I'm concerned, based on my track, track record in the FBI, that there's always a reticence to do anything to, to incur the wrath of a federal judge, who apparently is now ruling mm. uh, in, not in your favor, uh, to do anything to compromise your case. So it's kind of fruit of the poisonous tree. If they go out and conduct an interview based on, on this nuclear document, they could run the risk of compromising their investigation. Certainly, the Trump team will challenge it and say, why did you do this interview? Did you talk about the nuclear document or just the other documents? It's fraught with peril, and I'm concerned that it's that this part of the inquiry may have come to a screeching halt. The other thing is, yes, this is incredibly sensitive. I I'll tell you, in my experience, I've been read in and out of special access programs and various clearances. W one such program that I can't even go into required me to be polygraphed before getting access to the program and polygraphed after having a need to know. And, and I moved on and got polygraphed out. That's the kind of sensitivity, sensitivity we're talking about here. You know, Frank, somebody like former President Obama was also vocal about his concerns surrounding Trump and the nuclear codes back in 2016. This article from Politico in January of 2017, once Trump won the 2016 election, says President Barack Obama still doesn't think Donald Trump can handle the nuclear codes or safely protect America from attack. He just doesn't want to talk about it anymore. I mean, Frank, putting aside any of the tongue-in-cheek references that people have been joking about or kind of saying about the nuclear codes, knowing now how careless if not intentionally careless, if I could use that phrase, Trump has been with classified documents. How worried should we be that Trump could be back in possession of this kind of material if he gets reelected? Well, I'm concerned at this point that we still don't uh, entirely know the universe of documents that are out there or other places he may have stored them. I'm still not 100 percent convinced that they have everything back in, in custody, in the government's possession. So th th that's number one. Number two, in terms of his inability to handle this stuff, look, President Biden did the right thing when he issued uh, an order saying that, that former President Trump should stop getting 
the, the, the courtesy intel briefings that former presidents <laughs> get. Clearly, that was the right call. And I, I like to tell people, just to kind of put a, a, a personal touch on this, if a, if a guy named Donald J. Trump applied tomorrow to serve coffee at the Starbucks at FBI headquarters, based on his record of mishandling documents, he would not get the security clearance for the coffee job at FBI headquarters. And yet, people are talking about him running for president again. Ooh, Frank Figluzzi, I know I can always count on you to make sure we have the proper perspective. Thank you for sharing your personal experiences and your insight. It's really invaluable. Thank you so much.